Welcome. We're continuing our Tie Cats offseason roundup presented by WeatherTech. I'm your host, Louis B., the digital host for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. And today, very pleased to be continuing our series with the head coach of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, Orlando Steinauer, linebackers, Simone Lawrence and Jovan Santos Knox. Uh, gentlemen, it is uh, so great to see you guys. Uh, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, first of all, when was the last time you three have kind of all seen each other at the same place at the same time? <laughs> I was on the other side. I know that yeah. <laughs> in person, in person. But, uh, you know, I was able to connect with Coach O and, and Simone before, uh, you know, you know, well, Coach O before I signed and Simone uh, recently, you know. Um, so we connected recently. But last time I seen, I was in a whole different uniform, different colors. I don't even want to think about that. So that's over there. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are so excited to have you here uh, with the Hamilton Tiger Guys. And I'm sure I speak for Coach O. I speak for the fans who, who are very happy to see you here. And, uh, because we haven't talked to you since you joined, talk us uh, a little bit about that decision making. You said you talked to O there um, before you signed. So, how did you come to the decision to join this organization? Uh, it was actually quite easy. After I, you know, talked to Coach O and I talked to the rest of the coaching staff, um, it just made sense. Um, I've heard nothing but great things about this organization in the sense that it's just as professional as it gets, there's no better organization in the CFL than, than, than Hamilton. And, uh, you know, just the historic tradition that comes behind it and whatnot, um, it was more, no brainer for me. You know, I see myself, um, you know, thriving with, with, with this unit and, um, I see myself within the defense. Um, so, you know, when I, when I, when I saw the interest from Hamilton, um, you know, I was excited because, you know, I've always looked at them as, you know, looked at Hamilton as, you know, a top organization, top team in, in the league. Sim, does that, uh, does that reputation precede you guys? Uh, you know, you, you got Joe here talking about uh, what this organization is. It's, it's kind of reputation across the league. You've been here seven, eight years now. I, I feel like you play a big part of that. Uh, you know, um, I just, I, you know, I always give the credit to Coach Oh, You know, he started it way back, and that's my leader. So he's one of those guys where, you know, he gives the foundation and he lets the players be the players. And, you know, it's a, it's a fun environment. You know, you just get to rub and you miss it a lot. And it's, 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 it spreads through the league. You know, whether you hate Hamilton or love Hamilton, however you feel about Hamilton, you know you want to be a part of it, you know? Like, you just, you're curious. Yeah. You're outside looking at it. I don't care where you play or what you say. Like, I know a lot about the league and what goes on. You're curious. You want to get your feet wet. Like, I see all the little messages when you guys get in town. Like, hey, Sim, with the... I ignore them because I I'm, I think like you guys try to trick me and stuff, but <laughs> I, I, but I, I see the messages y'all send me and stuff when y'all get in town. But like I know everybody wants to get their feet wet. <laughs> that's that's the one thing, Coach. I've I've done interviews uh, in the in the opposing locker rooms, right? I've 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 done those post game scrums in the opposing locker room, locker rooms, and and the setup that you guys have in Hamilton, and Sue, so you can probably talk to this too. Like the the weight room, the locker room, the the actual like the organizational um, establishments that you have, you know, on your side of the football field. It, it really is a, a, a game changer, isn't it, Coach? O? It is. And I think just how Sam alluded to, you know, the leaders and, and that sort of thing, it's the same thing for me. You know, uh, when you talk about Bob Young, our caretaker uh, slash owner, and then of course, Scott Mitchell and, you know, Matt Afnick has, has climbed through the ranks also, they're committed to winning. And that's a big thing about it. And they give us the facilities and the building and then it's, it's what we do with it. And I think that uh, the first thing it starts with is, you know, how can we unite as a coaching staff? Because and that sort of thing and the bond we have there. And then it's about showing the players, you know, giving them the best opportunity in the platform where they can perform and letting them be who they are as individuals. And then just knowing that, yeah, I like that. I like knowing that when you come to Hamilton, you know, you got to have your chin strap buckled. That's that's what we do. And I uh, go ahead, Joe. I can say real quick. No, like. To Coach's point, you know, when you play Hamilton, you just – you see the sense of swag that they have when they step onto the field as a defense, as everything, and, and you know they're going to punch you in the mouth. And, you know, that was another big part of my decision-making is just like – you like like Sim said, you want to be part of that culture. That You know what I mean? It's, it, it just looks like you guys got something great built, like going on over there and just the culture and the swag that the, that the defense steps out there with, it, it's – it's inspiring. You want to be a part of it as, as a defensive player, as a competitor. So, uh, Sam, Joe mentioned there the, the swag. And I, I don't know, when I think of Simone Lawrence, I think swag. I think swagger. Uh, so, I mean, like. Oh, here we go. Is <laughs> <Louis>. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
Come on, I guess I got my swagger back. <laughs> You gave him a bigger platform. There's only four of us. Oh, go ahead, Sam. Go ahead, Sam. Sam, I mean, you, you got the swagger. You, but this whole defense does. And we talk about Coach O, and I, I do want to get to the fact that, I mean, Coach O, you, you were the defensive coordinator when uh, when uh, Sim kind of came to Hamilton. I want to talk about that in just a second. But, but now with Mark Washington, you know, you talk about it from the top the guys buying into this organization and, and yeah, you know, Joe talks about the swag you come out in, but that's earned, isn't it? That you, you got to earn that reputation to be able to flaunt that reputation. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, I'll just jump in real quick. And I'll just say that I think the one cool thing that, uh, you know, we, we tried to establish something solid here in, in 2013 and all I was in control of was the defense. And that was, that was the sole focus. And then I added Jeff Reinbold, uh, on my staff in the second year and he was the special teams coordinator and the linebacker coach and we were able to kind of get like two-thirds of the team on that and then when I knew that one day Tommy and I would work together again we just had that bond and when we had an opportunity to get him um, I, it just excited me so I would like to think that you know outside of the defense that the whole team now all three phases have taken on that same identity and as you stated, uh, it has been earned. It's nothing that's been given because people are always going to want to test it. Let me see. Let me see what this is. And that's, that's, that's what it should be. This is professional ball. Mm -hmm. uh, Sim, the one thing I've, I've, I think I've learned about you, you know, getting to cover you the last five, six years is, is you know, you want to get better every single year. And, and you know, once you, when you get older, that gets a little more tricky. And I'm sure Coach O can kind of attest to this. Like, you need to push yourself harder you need to push yourself further so do you feel like sim last year defensive player of the year, do you feel like you're at your peak right now like like if you could go back and tell yourself five years ago like 2021 sim is gonna be the best sim nah because i got the game i got the game a little late you know <laughs> i got the game when i started training with i remember one year i came back and I was heavy, and I remember everybody was looking at me funny, and then coach was like, hey, don't come back looking like that again. <laughs> but it's like, it's like you get the game of, like, what you, when you're when you're growing up, they tell you a whole bunch of stuff, and they're like, you got to do this, lift this, do this, do this. And it's like you get in tune with your body, and you're like, oh, I really, I don't want to, like, say what you don't have to do, but you just under, start to understand your body, what your body needs to be successful. And when you get older – it's really like, oh, I got to take care of my body more and do this better. Or I can't lift too many weights because I'm breaking down my body and I don't want to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger on the CFL field because yeah. I'm not going to be able to run and go nowhere. And it's like, I don't want to do too much of this because I know I watch that guy do it and his hamstring always goes. So you try to like, mm -hmm. you just look around and you see what happens to certain people and then you go creep their page and see what they're doing. Like, all right, I'm not going to do that nothing that guy's doing. I'm not. <laughs> and it's like you you go to the guys like, all right, that guy's always playing every season. Let me go creep on him and see what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> and, it's, and it's just one of those things where you just, you trust, you trust what you see as you're growing up. So it's like when you come in your zone. And then it's also with me, it's like being around people that you trust, right? And, like, that you don't want to let down. Because football is mental as shit if you really, like. And it's like you get in a uh, situation where it's like, oh, gosh, Coach O, the head coach. Oh, shit. You know, I got put on for him, you know. And it's like you got put on for certain people a little harder, you know. Because it's like, you know, that's a representation right there. And it's like the people. You play for your team. Like, you see Ted, you see Taylor Rott in the front. You're like, oh, I got I got to do what I got to do because I know he's going to take on like three double teams. You got Dylan Wynn. He's going to take on three double teams. You got Jagera who's going to rush the passer. It's just you got guys in the back locked down. It's like a whole team effort. And it's just it's more of like a team thing than an individual thing and trying not to let people down more. So, Joe, uh, to that point, I mean, you mentioned like some of the names Sim mentioned there that, that you're going to be lining up alongside JG, Taddy. I mean, where, where do you see yourself fitting in on, on this organization? 
Um, you know, I'm just coming in and trying to compete and, you know, help any, t- any type of way I can. Um, you know, in terms of the, the, the names that, co- that uh, Sim just read off, those are some great names to be playing in front of. I mean, to be playing behind, I mean, can't ask for a better front, you know what I mean? And playing next to a guy like Sim, you know what I mean? Sim's the best, you know, will in the game, hands down. So um, I think our games will complement each other very well. I, I see people, you know, worried about, oh, can, can he play Mike? He, I played Mike in college, and people don't realize it's very interchangeable in a lot of, in a lot of ways, um, the Mike and the, and the Will. So it's not a huge change or whatever to our game. I think we're actually going to be able to complement each other a lot, a lot uh, very well um, based off of watching him play. And, you know, I'm a student in the game, so like, like Sim says, I creep on, you know, other players' pages and see what they're doing and stuff like that because I'm a competitive guy at heart. And, you know, I've been watching Sim game since, you know, I've, I've stepped into his league. And, you know, he says it best, you know, I think at, at, at you know, at, you know, it comes a point in your career where, you know, training harder is not always the best thing for you, but training smarter is. So, um, you know, you know, whether that is, you know, finding out what works best for your body or what doesn't, um, it pays a key, key part of it. So, um, you know, I'm just excited. Those names that he, that he named off, it's just, it's just a great group of guys and, um, you know, like I said, I just want to compete. And, you know, like like Sim says, I let my teammates down. Coach, I just want to add something there, Louie, real quick. Go for like, it. I think the one thing that, that, you, that you heard from both of these guys and what's what's really cool and why they're Hamilton Tiger Cats is they compete. You didn't hear him say, I'm coming in here to start. You didn't hear Sim talk about starting. He's talking about competing. And they welcome all competition from everybody. Like Competition pushes players like this and men like this. And that's what you love. And then that, could co- you start combining a lot of that and it gives you the best opportunity. And therefore you, you form that culture. And, you know, having been in a locker room for 12 years, um, I know that that's where we had the most achievement ourselves. So I think you're looking at two competitive men. And I think that's what we're always looking for to surround these two men with, with those type of people. And those names that you just heard, they embody that also. Want to go back to you uh, for this one, coach, because uh, something Joe said there was uh, – Train smarter, not harder. And, you know, I can go back to, to 2019 McMaster uh, training camp, right? And, and, you know, asking where the guys are. What are they doing? Oh, they're in yoga. They're doing yoga. They're getting their bodies right. Like, like you, you, you're, you're a big, you buy into that, that train smarter, not harder. You're all about movement. You're like, how do you feel like that has affected the way you look at the game as someone who played it in the 90s and now is coaching it in, in the, you know, the 2000s here? Great question or comment. I think, you know, having played for 12 years, at the end of the day, football is a young man's game as a general statement, right? We all got our chance. When we all made a football team, somebody else didn't make it. So you're always looking to get replaced. So the training smarter, uh, not necessarily harder, is key. And I think that was part of, along with being fortunate and not getting any crazy serious injuries, uh, that was part of my longevity. And these guys understand that. And they're not afraid to talk to the people that have went before them. I often say, I don't give all our secret sauce away, but I often say, I used to look into the locker room when I went in and I was looking at who's played 10 years. I'm not looking at the superstar right now. Oh, okay, that's how he practices. That's how he lifts. That's how he takes care of his body. I see his notebooks open. Okay, that's how I see myself one day. I, I respected the current All-Stars, but I wanted to see man, 12 years, 10 years, something's going right. That's not 10, five staffs that just like a guy. You got to perform. And so, yeah, I am into the body thing. I think our, you know, Ike does a great job in the strength and conditioning and Claire and Maui do an outstanding job in the therapy room. But um, if you don't have coaches that buy into that or find the importance of it, then they'll say, well, let's just get 10 more reps on the field. And I'm saying, let's get 10 more minutes to stretch, yeah. you know? So, uh, yeah, I, I feel I don't want to get in my training camp mode top, but you, you, you hit it on. You hit it on. Sim, I was about to say, Sam, have you noticed the difference? I mean, you've been in this organization, you know, eight years. Coach has been, uh, you, know, you know, he was here, left his back. Now we're all happy he's back. But have you noticed the difference in terms of the way you've trained under under head coach Orlando Steinauer versus maybe DC or, or you know, a different coach? A hundred percent. I mean, I just – you, you just the student of the game. You like, I think that Coach O does a great job letting everybody knows what he wants and everybody's on the same page. And I see a lot, a lot of people coming to practice more, 
doing what they need to do more, not missing certain things and just being able, being, being available, you know, being available to be great. Uh, Joe, I, you know, we, we talked about joining this organization, what it means, but I mean, the, the fan base here is, uh, the, Sim will tell you, Coach O will tell you, this this fan base of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, there's something else, right? Like, oh, yeah. they, they love their football team. They love their Tiger Cats. I'm sure fans have already reached out to you, but what's it been like? What's that reaction been like from the fans, from your, from your perspective? Oh, it's been all love. Like you said, I, you know, in my time of being in the CFL, you know, I haven't been, like, I feel like this, this fan group, um, just goes above and beyond to make their players feel special and feel welcome. And just, um, you know, it's been, it's been a great experience just signing, you know, I haven't even stepped on the field and I, I'm, I'm, you know, getting the amount of love as I'm getting from, from the, from the fans is just, you know, it's amazing. And it speaks volumes to like, you know, what this, you know, how much this team means to the, or, to the community and whatnot. So, um, you know, like I said, I used to be the, the guy on the other side and, you know, just coming into the stadium, we knew, you know, not only do you just come to play and prepare to be ready for, you know, to get punched in the mouth on Hamilton, but you had to get ready for those fans who are just going to be on your, you know, be on you all game and not let up at all. And you love it. you got to love it. You know, as a football player, um, there's no better, you know, feeling than having, you know, an engaged audience, an engaged fan base like, like we do in Hamilton. So um, I'm excited. Um, I'm excited to get out there and actually meet, you know, interact with the fans. And, um, you know, I just, it's a special, special place for sure. Sam, can you can you put that feeling into words? Can you describe what it's like, you know, to to, to run out at, at midfield, come through the caretakers club, fifty, you know, twenty five thousand people screaming? Like, what is that feeling like? And what does that do for you, you know, when that kickoff starts? Like, what does it do? Like, what does it translate to on the field? Uh, sure. It's, it's a superpower. I always tell, so I tell everybody, like everybody always shows me video clips and they're like, what does that feel like? And, and the thing about football is it's something you just got to feel. It's something you got to have the pads on, you got to have the seats on, you got to have the helmet on and you got to be on that field because the fans is a big part of it. And then you see like all your teammates, the teammates, and your opponents, that's another huge part of it, too. You know, the fans are, of course, like, you know, we drive off the of fans. But knowing that you're about to go to a battle with your brothers and, like, against another team that think, they, they think like you think, and they're like, we better than them guys. We, nah, we better than them guys. It's like, shit, let's go out here and prove it. Let's see what's up. Like, that's, it's just a, it's too many different emotions to even, like, try to put it in words, really. And Coach Joe, I mean, you're, you, you've you been out of the game, but you mentioned your, your 12-year career. I'm sure there's still times where where the donut box is rocking, right? Tim Horton's field is going nuts, and you feel like you could probably put on some pads and, and maybe go out there and hit a few bodies. Uh, depends who you ask. I might have a, I might have a kickoff, a, 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 a number 12 contain in me. I might have a contain. Maybe a second level. Maybe a second level. I know I got a pick. I know I got a pick in me. But I don't know. But anyways, uh, my time, I said it's a young man's game. I'm not going to relive. But I, I, I did. we did all right for a few years in there when I played. But I'll say this. Even though our stadium changed, the people didn't. So mm. I remember either win when I played in Hamilton and when we won the Great Cup in 99, even when we didn't, like, the, you – You'd think that we were the beast of the East, even though we weren't. We went. We didn't win a lot in '97. Uh, Just the fans are passionate. And then when I left and went to the enemy down the QEW and put on the double blue and came back, oh man, they don't. It's like you were never there. Yeah. It's like yeah. you were never that's, there. That's how it got you. Is, <laughs> but, when I, but when I came back to the black and yellow, it's like I never left. Yeah. So yeah. that's the passion. It's like. I don't even know. I can't even see you in that other number. So, uh, yeah, uh, the, the, the fans make us go. And I think Sim hit it bang on um, from the perspective of you have to – it's something you have to feel. It's, it's trying to put into words. And then, you know, Yovana will give you that perspective from coming in from the other way. So, I think we've kind of encaptured it a little bit. Um, Coach, 2013, January 3rd, 2013, uh, you were hired as the uh, defensive coordinator for the Ticats uh, almost a month later. Just over a month, Simone Lawrence, uh, Jeremiah Masoli, they joined the team uh, in a trade. Uh, you, your, your careers have really been intermingled uh, throughout this organization the last eight years. Can you, can you just speak a little bit about 
how you've seen Simone grow as a player, how you've seen him grow as a man on the field, off the field in, in these last eight years here. Yeah, so part of being the D.C. was evaluating what we had. And unfortunately, whatever the reason was, there was a new staff that came in. So things obviously didn't go right. So there's always going to be some sort of change. And when I looked at number 48 for the Edmonton Eskimos, I saw they were using him as a D.I. I saw these gangly feet running around. And he played a little bit of nickel type of deals sparingly in the games he played against us. And I said, ah, I think we can harness that, you know, and, and, uh, and, I, and it excited us as a defensive staff when we eve out it. And then when, you know, Kent and, you know, and I think ET helped pull the trigger and get a guy like Jeremiah Mazzoli in the building. Uh, first of all, you're getting uh, people that love football. And then after you get him in the building, even though you can do your due diligence, as you start to get to know him as a, as a player and those sort of things. And, and Sim will tell you a better story than this. I remember I was excited. We had him all moved around. We moved a Jamal Johnson from Mike to, or from Will to Mike, a, a lot like Yovan here, right? And to make room for Sim. And then he goes and hurts his hamstring like two days before. I said, oh, Lord, what do we got? Here's a guy. He ain't going but. That's that's really the only time. So, um, yeah, it's, it's it's exciting. You know, when you see things on tape, but what you couldn't see on tape was the passion that this man has for football. I think you turn on the tape of Yovan, especially two years ago, and you see the same type of passion. Come about people that love the game of football. Sim, Sim, you remember walking into that 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 meeting room the first time, you know, working with Coach Joe 2013, and, and how do you feel – Again, just, just to reflect on Coach O's point there, how do you feel like you've grown these last uh, eight years? Um, I feel like, you know, of course we had different staff in there, but one thing about Coach O is, like, he's the definition of consistency, right? Like, what you what you see is from him is what you get. Like, no matter what's going on, when you see Coach O, he's going to be who you met, you know? So it's like, that's what, I, that's what like, that's something that I, I love, you know, just especially about playing sports and stuff, just the – like, you know, if you go in front of Coach O, you're going to get the same vibe, the same energy. You come in the meeting room, it's going to be consistent, and the message is not going to waver whether we just lost eight games in a row or won eight games in a row. It's the consistency, and that's what you love as a player. So, Joe, when you hear all this stuff, when you hear, you know, Coach O talk about how, how he's seen Simone, how he looks at players, how he evaluates talent, Again, what is it? What is it? Again, a question I asked you at the beginning of this, but now, you know, 15, 20 minutes into it, what are your thoughts? Like, what, what are you feeling right now joining this organization? I'm, I just know, you know, I, I'm getting the best coaching. Um, that was a huge part of my decision, too, is, you know, coaching. I want to continue to be coached. I feel like, you know, I haven't tapped into my full potential yet. And, um, you know, I feel like, you know, with the right coach, I'm always willing to learn. So um, with Coach O, and the rest of the staff, you know, I, I feel like I will never stop learning. That's something that's big to me because, um, you know, we, no matter how long you play in the game, you could always learn something, you know what I mean? And just being able to play alongside a guy like Sim, um, watching him play, you know, just throughout the league and whatnot, um, throughout, throughout my time in the league, um, just seeing his passion for the game and stuff, it just, like Coach says, it, you know, we see eye to eye with that. You know, I'm, I'm right here with him when, when, when he's talking, compete. And, you know, I think one of our first conversations I had with him, he's like, you know, it's going to be a race to the ball. And we, and we like that. That is, that, I embrace that. Like, when I hear that, I love the sound of that because, you know, I know Sim's going to do everything in his power to get the tackle, and I'm going to do everything in my power to beat him. Then. So, um, you know, I think iron sharpens iron. And, you know, with this staff and with this, you know, with this unit and just being able to work with them, you're going to see the best, you know, me I think, um, that the CFL has seen. I've, I've never played, I've never put on pads at McMaster, right? Uh, you know, this past, you know, May, when May rolls around, but I know the days are getting long. No way! It feels, right? right? Can you believe it, Sim? But, like, I, I can feel it. Like, I can feel it in my gut. Like, days are getting longer, weather's getting nicer, like, mm -hmm. football season's right around the corner. Like, what are you feeling right now? We'll go around the horn here to wrap this up, but Sim, what are you feeling right now, knowing that, you know, the season is getting closer, haven't played since, you know, 2019, we know how the last time the Ticats hit the, we know what happened, we don't have to go down that road. Right, but but what are you feeling right now as as you know spring's getting here and just that that desire to play? What are you feeling? It's a uh, it's like it, you try to harness it because it's like 
you don't want to you don't want to blow so quick but it's just a, un, another unreal experience i remember so yesterday we had some great weather so we were doing one-on-ones and you know just like those sharp and just see where you're at like mentally so you go <laughs> work with like the college kids the high school kids and then you get the so i'm like oh man like you're going against receivers doing one-on-ones and then you get your first breakup, and you're just like, ah, oh, let's go. I'm ready. You're like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready for Speedy B. I'm good. Let's go. <laughs> it's, just, it's just football's one of those things where, you know, you get your feet wet. You get your feet wet a little bit. You just keep riding that bike and putting a little bit more on it. And then when you get to camp, like, it's, it's go time. Joe, how you feeling? What are you feeling right now? Uh, Me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, you know, I'm just I'm anxious and excited. You know, I feel like my season, I didn't I didn't have, you know, the season I wanted to, you know, the last time I stepped on the field. So um, you know, I put in a lot of work since that time and I'm just anxious to show, you know, you know, my body of of work. Everything I've, you know, I've I've put in this this off season, last off season. It's been two off seasons now, I guess. Um, you know, two seasons of just, you know, grinding my grinding and just ready to show it in, you know. And get that itch. I got that itch right now, like to play football. Like you said, it's getting warmer out here. We're getting nicer days. We're going from the bubble. Now we're moving outside. And once you get on that field, you lay some up. It's a whole different. You're, you're, you're. It's like your home. You know what I mean? You're back in your comfort zone. So um, the minute we get back out, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers that we get this start date right on, right on time because I, I need football. I need football. So. Coach, coach, finish this off here. How you feeling? What, uh, you know, days getting longer. Springs around the corner. What are you feeling right now? All the emotions, like all the emotions, just ready, just ready. You know what I mean? Like ready just sums it up. It's, it's generic, but it's the truth. Just ready. Like whatever happens, uh, like we're ready. We'll be ready. Like we're no excuse. We're ready. To, we'll be ready to rock. But, you know, just being in front of these guys got my, my, my juices flowing, like, you know, and I, I just picture that first team meeting when, when there's, a, you know, a hundred people out there and it's just like, yeah, we're going to get this done with the people in this room right now. Get used to it. Let's start building this bond. Let's ride. Like, that That excites me. So, but again, you know, if I do all that, I won't have anything for the first meeting. So, right. I, I got to train I gotta train smarter, too, right? I got to train smarter, too. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, uh, it is great to see you all. Um, thank you so much for doing this. I, like, like Coach O said, I can't wait to be there at McMaster, day one of training camp, uh, to get to see you guys in person. Uh, but thank you. I know the fans appreciate it. I know I appreciate it. So, uh, thank you very much for doing this.